Southeast Asia is a fascinating and unique land that's constantly underestimated by people from outside the area. Southeast Asia is normally defined as all of the land south of China, east of South Asia, west of Oceania, and north of Australia, being comprised of the countries of Brunei, Burma, also known as Myanmar, it's complicated, Cambodia, East Timor, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. People sometimes think of Southeast Asia as a small collection of homogenous states. However, the area has a population of over 630 million people, or over twice that of the United States, and a land area of about 1.7 million square miles. Southeast Asia is a diversity hotspot, not only for fauna and climate, but human diversity as well, having one of the most heterogeneous religious and ethnic landscapes of any region on the planet, with hundreds of different ethnicities, with no single group making up more than 20% of the population. The same can be said for religious groups, with no religious group making up a majority of the region. Southeast Asia has one of the most interesting histories of any region, which has largely contributed to its extreme human diversity. The largest religion in Southeast Asia isn't Buddhism, like many might be tempted to think. It's actually Islam, with around 40% of the population practicing the religion, mostly in the southern portion of the region. The next largest would be Buddhism, at about 30%, mostly in the north, and then Christianity at 20%. The rest of the population is either non-religious, especially in Vietnam because of the communist influence, practices animistic religions, and a small minority practice Hinduism. Instead of going through the video by each country like I do in previous videos, we're going to be looking at each of the ethnic and racial groups that make up the population and how they came to be there. Southeast Asia not only has a large variety of groups originating from all over the world, they also have a very diverse native population as well. There are a few main language families that the region can be divided into, and most of the native ethnic groups fall into these categories. The largest division would be the Austronesian peoples that inhabit all of the Philippines, most of Indonesia and Malaysia, as well as having a few groups in mainland Southeast Asia. It's believed that the Austronesians originated in the island of Taiwan off the coast of mainland China, and that they slowly migrated down into the Philippines by boat, spreading out over the rest of maritime Southeast Asia. Some of the largest groups of Austronesian origin are the Javanese, the largest group in Indonesia, the Tagalog and Visayans of the Philippines, and the Malays, who are actually spread out not only in the country of Malaysia, but also in neighboring Singapore, Indonesia, and southern Thailand as well. There's also a small group of people in Taiwan, collectively known as Taiwanese Aborigines, who are of Austronesian origin, with the rest of the island being predominantly Han Chinese. Almost all of the Austronesian peoples are either Muslim, such as the Javanese or Malays, or Christians, such as the Filipinos. However, there are small pockets of animism still practiced in the region, and the last remaining remnant of adherence to Hinduism in Southeast Asia is actually found on the island of Bali, with most Balinese people practicing the faith, although the Hinduism there is a bit different than that found in South Asia, no doubt because of hundreds of years of separation. Occasionally, scholars may consider Japanese and or Koreans to be descended from Austronesian peoples from Taiwan, but this is a bit of a dubious claim, and no clear consensus has yet to be met on the subject. The next largest group would be speakers of Austroasiatic languages, which may sound a little confusing since Austroasiatic and Austronesian sound and look so similar, but it makes sense when you look at it through the roots. The group is additionally known as Mon Kumai, if you'd like to avoid the confusion. This group includes the Vietnamese, also known as Kin people, and the Kumai, or Khmer, people of Cambodia. The country of Cambodia is extremely religious Buddhist, while Vietnam is far more atheistic and also has a small Christian minority of about 10%. You might think that neighboring Laos would have fallen into the latter category, but Lao people are actually very closely related to the people of Thailand with it being heavily debatable whether or not Lao is a separate language or simply a dialect of the larger Thai language, which makes it a part of the Thai Kadai family. Thai peoples inhabit all of Thailand, save for the region of Patani in the far south, which is made up of Malay Muslims, most of Laos, parts of neighboring Burma, 
as well as stretching up as far north as Hunan province in China. Thai people, much like the neighboring Cambodians, are extremely devout Buddhists, and Christians make up perhaps 1-2% to of their population. The smallest group of Southeast Asia would probably be the Mong Mien peoples of northern Laos and Vietnam, with the largest ethnicity being the Hmong people, as could be expected. I actually have a friend from Laos, well, actually he's from California, but you know what I mean, that's of Hmong origin, and he constantly refers to the movie of Gran Torino, which I highly recommend if you haven't watched it, by the way. They mention how Hmong people in Southeast Asia are more ruggedly independent, since they live in highly forested mountainous terrain, although they don't have their own state. The Hmong Mien peoples are primarily animistic with large Christian and Buddhist minorities thanks to overseas missionaries. Let's talk about the country of Burma real fast. The Burmese people, known as ethnic Bamars, are actually speakers of Sino-Tibetic languages, meaning that they're related to Chinese, but especially the Tibetan peoples, with their ancestors most likely migrating from the Tibetan plateau a couple thousand years ago. However, due to mixing with other groups from South and Southeast Asia, their appearance is more Southeast Asian rather than East Asian in appearance. Speaking of which, all of the groups which were previously mentioned, sans the Burmese, can be classified as Austric peoples, since many scholars consider the Austronesian, Austroasiatic, Thai Kadai, and Hmong Mien peoples to be distantly related in a larger language family known as Austric. These people are generally far darker in skin color than their northern counterparts in East Asia, normally getting darker the further south you travel in the region, and also a bit shorter in stature. By far the largest concentration of people of Southeast Asian descent can be found in the United States, where up to 5.4 million people have ancestry from the region, and this expands by over half a million people when you include Americans with partial Southeast Asian ancestry, such as many of half-white or half-Vietnamese descent, or the increasingly common half-Filipino, half-white ancestry. Now, the aboriginal inhabitants of Southeast Asia before the arrival of Austric peoples is still up for debate, but it's believed to be various groups of Melanesian peoples, closely related to the people of nations such as Papua New Guinea, Fiji, or Australian aborigines. This can be seen in the Negrito people of the Philippines, or the various Papuan peoples of the western half of the island of Papa, which actually belongs to the country of Indonesia. They're extremely dark and may resemble Africans at first glance, but Melanesian people are actually genetically the most divergent population from sub-Saharan Africans, meaning that of all the races of people on the planet, Melanesians and Africans are the least closely related. Southeast Asia also had a plethora of non-native groups come to the region in the past few hundred years, but the largest of which is definitely the Han Chinese. The region of Southeast Asia has by far the highest number of Han Chinese people of any region in the world by both population and percentage. There are an estimated 30 to 40 million people of Chinese descent in the region, and they have a significant presence in literally every country with the nation of Singapore having a Chinese population at 70%, although this is the only nation outside of East Asia with a Chinese majority. The Philippines and Thailand both have immense Chinese populations, with up to 30 and 40% of their populations respectively having at least some recent Chinese ancestry that they're aware of. Chinese dominate trade, currency, and in some cases politics of many areas of Southeast Asia, although a severe backlash of anti-Chinese sentiment has hit the region in the past century, especially in Vietnam and Indonesia. The region has not only had a large genetic input from East Asia, but South Asia as well, with around 10 million people of various South Asian ethnicities living in the region. They have their highest concentrations in Singapore, Malaysia, and Burma, with the latter actually having a large Indian minority prior to becoming independent, since it was governed for a long time as a part of British India. Arabs, Persians, and other Middle Easterners are responsible for the spread of Islam to the region, and they certainly left their genetic imprint as well, with as many as 5 million people having full or partial Arab descent in the country of Indonesia alone. The latest group with significant genetic input in the region would be the Europeans. Europeans colonized nearly all of Southeast Asia, 
minus Thailand, and as such, nearly every country has a large population of people of full or partial European descent, such as the Indo people of partial Dutch descent in Indonesia, the Anglo-Burmese of Burma, but especially Filipino mestizos from the Philippines who are part Spanish. Around 3 to 4 million Filipinos have at least half European DNA, mostly from years of Spanish colonization, but also from descent from American troops as well, and up to 15% of the Philippines has at least some DNA from Europe, being one of the only nations in Asia to have such a high European influence. Southeast Asia is honestly one of my favorite regions to learn about in the entire world. It has one of the most interesting ethnic, religious, and racial landscapes that I've ever studied, being wrapped up in history at every corner. Southeast Asia is definitely worth learning about, and there's so much in this video that I wanted to talk about but couldn't because of the video length, so go ahead and let me know your thoughts on Southeast Asia down in the comments below. If you're from the region, tell me what you think of other Southeast Asians. It'd be incredibly interesting to see what a united Southeast Asian country would look like, but in reality, that'll probably never happen. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.